Hello, Jaden. Hey, Paul. How you going? I'm doing very well. So we have a guest on. Here we do today. have a guest on. So I'll introduce our guest, uh, Brad McDonald. Okay, has uh, been in real estate for about seven years. And uh, started off as an electrical engineer, I believe, or electrician in the mines. Electrician in the mines, that's wow. right. Wow, so that's a bit of a change of industry. Bit of a tradie. Got the tradie background. Yeah. Got the tradie background. <laughs> background. Everyone loves tradies, don't they? Like yeah. They're the most popular people at the pub, so yeah. <laughs> so that should work with real estate as well. Yeah, but think. No, one about- like, no one liked the sparkies, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. My dad's a sparky as well. I've heard all the stories about them. So Brad McDonald, welcome to the show. Yeah, so, thanks for having um, me. Yeah. So uh, doing uh, your first podcast. It's exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So what uh, what makes Brad McDonald tick in real estate? And uh, tell us a little bit, our audience, a little bit about, um, you know, what you do and... Who you are. Who you are. Well, it started about when I was probably 19, 20 years old. My parents uh, were in real estate for a long time. And I decided, you know, always listen to them every day when they came home and I was like, oh, man, can they stop about talking about real estate? It's all they do is talk about real estate, real estate, real estate. Yeah. Frankly, I was sick of it listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be too. <laughs> but now I understand why. Yeah, right. Yeah. Bit of subliminal training happening in the background, I think. Yeah. And you were sort of taking in all the little tips and tricks yeah. of what's going on. and I think so. Yeah. You moved, yeah. You moved into real estate. I did, yeah. So it was it was good. So always listening to the tricks and uh, tips uh, from mum and dad, and I think – yeah that's who I am today. Like, you know, if it wasn't from them, I wouldn't be where I am now. So, yeah. which is, is a massive part, especially for my career. Mm-hmm. Uh, massive change from being, you know, from the grubby electrician mm. to, to really selling someone's one of their biggest assets. Um, it's massive. To, yeah. To yeah. get that opportunity. So you come from, what is it, First National Bayside? Correct, yeah. And that is run by your family, like your parents? It is, is yeah, right? mum and dad, yeah. Yeah, right, right. So when did they start that up? Oh, I think probably 19 years now they've been doing um, that up at Wellington Point. Yeah. Uh, before that they were doing real estate as well with another company mm-hmm. uh, for a long time. Um, and then, yeah, we just branched off to, to First National, which is a, a very great organisation. Yeah. Um, you know the CEO Ray Ellis is very heavily involved in the in the corporation, which is great. Yeah, um, it's just in the we've got a few in the base side, um, and it's great. It's it's you know it's all about giving. Yeah. So um, First National's uh, been going for for a while, so it's a very well established brand. You know, in the base side, um, have you guys noticed any sort of big changes at the moment in real estate? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, there's a lot of um, put it this way. It, it, you don't really even need a window shop anymore. Yep. Right. Um, everything's done, social media. It's all online. Online now. All online. Yep. yep. Yeah, right. So how do you approach that in terms of being active on social and, you know, being that, you know, having that image online? How do you do it? Oh, pretty hard to be honest with you because yeah. I'm not really savvy with social media. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my father is probably like really old school. <laughs> so yep. He's all about the paper. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, newspaper articles. Yeah. The old red times. Straight to, straight to the real estate <laughs> section. <laughs> oh, there's no listings in here anymore. Where are they all gone? Yeah. I have uh, Facebook, seen, Dad. Facebook. <laughs> I've seen the the, 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 the part of the uh, newspaper with the, yep. the properties in it just get thinner it's and shrinking, thinner isn't it? Every yeah. year. Oh, I he used to go through and cut out all of yeah. my my what, the, uh, the, the, the ones I shot like ages ago. Yep. and it's just gotten yeah, like small. It is. It's next to nothing. Year. And then what, just recently, a whole bunch of newspapers are closing down as well. So really? it really, yeah, the industry is changing quite a lot and the dynamic of, you know, where people are shopping and finding information is changing. Yeah, right. So I guess that's uh, why you're here doing a podcast because you're mm. trying to keep up, you know, with uh, what people are trying to do and research and that type of thing. So, yeah, it's exciting that uh, you're on top of the digital space and you're actually, you know, trying new things. So mm. yeah, yeah, I reckon it's great. It's great. On air. On air. On air. <laughs> Woohoo. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I had a client, actually, yep. um, who, it was a shoot last week, and she said that a, a very famous icon had their house on the uh, market. I heard that too. Yeah, really? Little birdie told us, didn't they? Yeah. Now, did, 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 did you have anything to do with that, Brad? I did, yes. Yes, it was, um, it was uh, mind-blowing. Yeah, well, we can't say too much on air because we're not allowed to, but I'm sure uh, people can Google it quite easily. But oh, exactly. um, it would have been a bit of a life-changing moment for you. 
it was. It was um, selling someone um, famous um, and such a Queenslander. Yeah. Um, it's just great um, mm. to get that opportunity to, to do so. Um, because you touched on it. Yeah. yeah, I might say a little story about okay. behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I love story. Go on. There we go. Let's yeah, do right. it. Don't tell anyone. Can't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite. <laughs> no, I was always a big fan. So uh, before I uh, did an inspection, I I had my uh, Queensland jersey. Yeah. Um, I had it uh, in the car. I walked in the house and I said, "Hey, look, any chance that um, I could get my jersey signed?" And he said, "Yeah, mate, no worries. Go get it." Went and got it. Put it there. You know, tell me what young boy, you know, in your fantasies get the opportunity to, to get a signed jersey in their living room. Um, wow. Yeah, that's it's amazing. That sort of would have been standing there pinching yourself going, is this really happening? Like, that would have been. I was. Yeah, I was like yeah. a little boy in a candy store <laughs> going, woohoo, woohoo. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> um, I love that. Yeah, it was really good. Oh, um, that, 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 yeah, that's great awesome. family. Um, everything was good. Um, yeah, done the job and it was sold. Yeah, there lovely. You go. And you got a jersey. You walk back into the car. Were you putting in the back of the car, just staring at it, going, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I'm putting this back in my car? This happened. Yep, 100%. <laughs> yeah, That's I've got yeah. it at home, hidden away. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> Holding on to it, I bet. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. So you wanted to come and talk about uh, some of the current market. Yep. Um, like how to sell or, yeah, 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 yeah. Just take it away, man. Um, so what are the current market conditions like down on the Bayside? Look, at the moment, the, the market's quite strong. Mm. Uh, there's not enough stock, uh, meaning so there's a lot of a lot of buyers out there at the moment that, that, that don't have – you know, enough to look at. Yep. It's, it, it's mm. getting snapped up within 24 hours, mm. uh, meaning that, you know, if anyone's listening out there, this is the time to go to the market at the moment because the market's strong. Yeah. Um, a lot of people from Melbourne, Sydney ringing saying, hey, look, what have you got? Um, we obviously can't come up with the conditions, um, but we'll pretty much look at buying anything and, and they're, they're up in the prices. Yeah. I yeah. had one recently, which was in uh, Murray Street, just in... Birkdale. Yeah, right. And what happened there was um, sight unseen, you know, 490,000. Like, I wouldn't even put my dog in it. <laughs> Far out. Yeah. So people are, are definitely, you know, obviously in the market to buy, and we hear the same thing around the traps as well. But but the, the funny thing is a lot of vendors are, are hearing a very different story. They're worried about the current situation and circumstances. But, I mean, if you look at it, it's almost a perfect storm. We've got record low interest rates. You know, the government's down to, what, 0.1. Reserve Bank's down at a 0.1%, yep. which is the lowest in Australian history for, for borrowing money. Right. Um, accessing credit has become easier. And, um, you know, so buyers are primed, aren't they, really, to just jump in and, and get that purchase happening happening now and especially people that potentially have been holding off on the market going yep I need to get in so there's a flurry of buyers but the the the, the vendors are all going oh I don't know it's uncertain times and they're just watching you know the doom and gloom on the news but it's definitely not what's out there in, in reality is it that's correct yeah it's um it's unbelievable at the moment what's happening out there it's like back in the back in the day we'd probably get two to three people in the in the redlands uh, for open homes and at the moment we're, we're getting up to around 20 people through an open home. You're serious? Yeah, depending on, on the property. Yeah. Um, anything under that 500,000 range is walking out the door. Uh, anything over, um, maybe sit for a week and a half, two weeks, um, and then you've got the next bracket after that. Yeah. And, and then, then the higher end market. So, so tell us a little bit about, you know, the, you know, obviously we were having to chat a little bit off air as well. Um, you know, uh, what, what, what's some of your advice to vendors, you know, if they are looking at selling? Like, I mean, it's, it's um, you know, they've got to obviously choose their agent wisely. You know, they've got to actually uh, do a little bit of research. You know, what, mm. what would you say to those people that um, are a little bit sceptical about selling? But, um, you know, if they are thinking, then how would they go about doing it the right way? Oh, look, you've, you've got to see what property sell for. So you've got to actually do the research and say, okay, hang on. Look, that was on the market for that, but it actually sold for that. Mm. Um, the, the way that I look at it is if I go to a market appraisal, I usually say um, to, the, the, to, the, to the vendors, Mrs. Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Vendor, um, you know, this is where we're at at the moment on the marketplace. Potentially you can get that, but your offers most likely will come there. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of them will then say to me, oh, but, you know, we want this. Mm. You know, we all want more, but unfortunately it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, so you can always sort of shoot for the stars, but, I mean, you're, you're being more realistic and saying, look, you're going to fall between this bracket here. Yep. Don't fall into the trap and, and, and take that number as being gospel. Let's talk about this number, but, you know, you'll shoot for the stars. That's kind of yep. what you're saying. You'll try and get them that if it's there. Yeah. But uh, don't fall for the whole, yeah, don't, you know, you don't want people promising, over-promising, yeah. you know, something that, that may that, not happen in your opinion. And that's what's happening. Hmm. Um, you go to a market appraisal, you're up against three or four agents and – you know, they're saying that, oh, my house is worth a million, but you know their house is worth nine, ten. Mm. But, you know, it, it's you, you tell them one thing, but all they see is, is a final figure. Yeah. But they don't understand the, the processes behind the scenes to, to get that. Yeah, right. So so, so, that, so so some agents are just trying to buy listings down there. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yep. So just, just... Do you want me to name them? No, no, no. no. <laughs> let's get it. Let me get the oh, beating sorry, buzzer. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> so, yeah, that you and you and you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like like an agent came in here and they told me, right, Jaden, your house is worth 700000 And I'm going, well, holy shit. Right? Okay, sweet. And then I get in, old man over here, all right, it's worth five ninety. I'm just like, well, old man over here just told me it was, so who's right? You know, like, is he more realistic than him? So I could assume that that would cause a lot of confusion with, you know, vendors, at mm. the, uh, like when it goes to the whole who to choose because there's who is, who's right and who's wrong. So it comes down to their background research in terms of what is sold around it, 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 like it, around the area yeah, yeah it's, so it's, they have to be like educated themselves so yeah yeah do some research yeah right yeah it's interesting that's a good very good point you know especially i guess so the older generation that don't you know know how to research or they don't spend a lot of time online or know where to find that information mm. or the ones that get caught out a little bit more than the others yeah um but um you know i think yeah you're right you know i think you know I, we've always said don't we like people whether it's you know real estate or any industry you've got to be that orange in a basket of apples you've got to be that person who's having different conversations and telling them how it is whether they want to hear it or not do you find it hard to sort of you know walk in and go well that's what it is you know like, yeah, definitely. I find it as soon as I get a call and someone says to me, "Oh, Brad, can you do a market appraisal?" Yeah. First thing I think of is, "Oh, here we go. Someone's using me again." Yeah. Um, either to find out what the commission rate is, or or what, what you know, what mm. am I going to put to the table? Yeah. Um, to compare to someone else in in the Redlands. Mm. Um. It yeah, it's it's cutthroat. Definitely cutthroat. It's um. You have your highs, you have your lows. Yeah. Um, you might you might lose one, but you might gain three that week as well. So it's it's hit and miss. You know, real estate's all about communication, um, trusting your agent, yeah, and answering your phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, answering your phone is massive. Well, I'm actually in the market for buying a house right now, and that phone answering is a shocker. Oh. Um, I put online inquiries, and I've left messages with people in my local area trying to get in contact with, and nothing. Crickets. Yep. Absolute crickets. Do you know what? I'll wait for the next house. So you feel sorry for that poor vendor, where a genuine buyer, even like myself, is ready to go, yep, I like that home, can't get in contact with the agent, and I'm walking to the next home. That's terrible. That's yep. a horrible position. To and be it's in. happening. It's happening, happening too everywhere. often. You know, you see it all the time. You go into a listing and you tell them that that's what it's worth and, and they go, yep, no worries. And then, you know, a week later you sit on the market with another agent and, and you're like, are you kidding me? And there's no price on it, obviously, property preview and mm. da 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 Look, we're in raw. I might as well tell you what the uh, property preview means, well, to me anyway. Yep. Um, people put property preview on, on a new listing uh, two things. One, one to get to see how much audience is out there to see what they're inquiring about. Yeah. Uh, and then also they do it to um, get a database. And, you know, that's – don't get me wrong, I've done it before too. Um, it, it gets a database of people mm. and then you, you can put them in that bracket and you know that that's what they're inquiring about around that figure. Mm-hmm. And then you can use them on other properties as well. Um, and that's how you can service – how do you sort of tackle that approach, you know, where, you know, um, you're not really sort of actively, I guess, farming for buyers, yep. but you're trying to help the genuine ones, right? Yeah, correct. So 
at an open home, I obviously get their details when they walk through the door, and and I'll, I'll just st- straight uh, say to them straight away, say, hey, look, if this doesn't suit you, all good, just let me know before you leave, and you know, send me a message and if something, you know, what price bracket does or what areas and that, and we'll go from there. Yeah. You know, people follow up on, on Mondays. I'll tell you what, mm. people don't want to be called on Monday morning, okay? No one wants to go to work on a Monday, for starters, and then have some real estate ring them and say, oh, <laughs> hey, you came through such and such. <laughs> what do you, what do you think of sense, actually. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, like I like, wouldn't want to be uh-huh. called. Okay, do you, mm. when you go buy clothes... Okay. Yeah, right. Oh. If you're going to buy it, yeah. you're going to buy it, aren't you? Yeah, I'd go in there and actually make it purchase. Oh, don't you hate it when, when you, you walk down there, you know, you walk in an aisle and, this, and the bloke says, oh, mate, can I help you? And you're like, fuck off, mate. Like, all I want to do, <laughs> if I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy that. Yeah. It's like a house. Like, if, if they're going to buy it, they're going to buy it. Yeah. You know, your job is to negotiate and get the deal together. Mm. Yep. And it's your reputation down the line as well because they'll form an opinion of those people and won't do business with them in the future. Yep. Could you imagine – okay, so that clothes shop analogy is pretty good, right? Okay, so, yeah. Like, I'm Did you like that house. one? Oh, I like that one, yeah. yeah. That's so, great. So yeah, could you so imagine you walking into 10 shops and that happening to you all day? You're right. going to get the shits, yeah? Yep. Oh, so like all of these shops just like going, oh, hey. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, so it's the it? same with me. You said that, you know, no one wants to get caught on a Monday, right? So if I do five open homes on a Saturday, I'm getting five calls. At Not least, only yeah. just missed calls, they're calling again and again, yep. following up with an email. I'm like, do you know what? Just, whoa. Yep. And this right? is why we get bad name. Mm. This reason, this is why that. <laughs> when I first started real estate, <laughs> I was afraid to tell people I was in real estate. Really? Because everyone looked at you differently. They thought, oh, another wanker. Look, yeah. I, can, I can go to the shops and, and see someone and and I can head, you know, put my head higher and mm. say, yeah, I've, I've done my job. Yeah. I've, I've worked for the owner. I've done my job. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's all, you know, that's, that's the main part of it. Mm. You, you, you know, like alongside that, I've always heard that there's agents in this field who like either work for the, work for the vendor or for themselves. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the ones who work for the vendor will, you know, go that extra mile, they'll work on a, Sunday, like they'll just really push yep. it and make yeah. sure that it's they, their biggest that asset, they right? So they get really the believe right in the price, yeah, absolutely. Whereas they, they, they agents who work with themselves will try and sell that, like, sell, like sell that for the that first offer, yeah. Um, even though it might not be the best, or they know that there's more out there, or it's not and on the market for quite like, like, whereas they just kind of want that paycheck, yeah, rather exactly. than. Than the the right price for the vendor, so and the repeat business, yeah. Because end of the day, that vendor who's who knows the agent's done the right thing, mm. and they know wholeheartedly all the information was presented to them, good and bad. It's not always roses, is it? At the end of the day, when you go home to your girls, you're a family man, yeah. You play golf on the weekend, so yeah, I love golf. You know, you, you you're not sort of out there hobnobbing. When I can, and, oh, do you, don't get out that much. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> When I can. When you can. Yeah. It's yeah, so, yeah. The old social club down at Wellington Point with hey. my old man. Hey. It's good. Hey. Every few, you know, fourth Sunday every week or something like that, we, we yeah. have a hit. Oh, lovely. Mm. It's good. I've yeah, only played golf it once. It's a good exercise, actually. I walked the whole way. I didn't get into a buggy, but I don't walk... Like, were like you zigzagging? Are you, are you one of those golfers that get <laughs> twice as many steps as everyone else? Because you're like, <laughs> you hold everyone like, up. You hold everyone up. No, I, was, I was walking, but where the purpose is, like, I'm walking to, <laughs> to the ball. ball. <laughs> I'm just going for, for a walk around. around the oh, ball. I chase my ball. I'm shocking. Well, I used to be okay, but now, oh, no, not anymore. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, okay. So, look, we'll, we'll take a quick break. And uh, we'll touch on a couple of other little tips from yourself on, um, you know, what people should be looking out for. And, um, yeah, we'll Come be back in a minute. All right. And we're back with Brad McDonald. So, uh, Brad, um, you know, we were talking a little bit uh, just then, you know, about, um, you know, some issues or some ways that people can actually research an agent. Have you got any sort of hot tips on what um, people should look for? Yeah, you can. There's a few options. You can go on Rate My Agent, which is a database. It's kind of a review site, isn't it? Independent review site. 
Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so people can actually sort Made of by the clients of these agents, so it's not like they've just put up their own profile. It's more yeah, agent, yeah. The, the clients are saying yeah, things soon, about the yeah, agents, so, as soon as so you like crowd. Soon as, yeah, so as soon as you sell a house, mm. um, you can send a review yep. uh, to the email. Okay. And then they, they will obviously do one if they want, um, five stars being the best, and then do a little bit of a, a spiel. Yeah. So it's a it's a good tool to have. So especially any anyone looking out there to buy, um, even even buy, sell, look at these. The review sites. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the <right>. review sites. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah. because it's like that crowd crowdsource kind of thing, basically saying all of these clients have... Yeah, so like, there's a lot of places to I, do yeah research on agents now. So yeah, yeah, well, well, people yeah. Have, so you got rate my agent, you got Google reviews, you've got uh, real estate dot com. They've got their own review platform. They've yeah, they've just year. started. Yeah, yeah they've so, just started that, which is a good thing. I think they're trying to cut everyone else out with the um, get rid of rate my agent and and that. And then obviously rate my agent's got suburbs as well. Yeah, um, and it's got Queensland and. Australia and all that kind of so stuff. So you can narrow it down to your region, which is pretty yeah, pretty, suburbs, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So when people have gone through that process, you know, they've narrowed it down to sort of a small handful. You know, one tip we said just before, you know, call their phone. You know, call them on a weekend, call them possibly even after hours, you know. See who answers their phone, who gets back to you in a timely manner, you know, because at the end of the day, if that agent's calling you back in a timely manner, they're going to be contacting your buyers as well. So you've got that assurance that they're going to be on top of the inquiries yep. that are coming in, correct? That was, a great, that was a great tip. 100%. And if you're not answering your phone, get out of real estate. Yeah. Because your phone rings 24-7. My wife, we're sitting at the dinner table and she's my phone's right there. <laughs> it rings. <laughs> she's got. The she's like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, "I've got to answer it. Have to." <laughs> I had one for the Melbourne Cup just recently. There yeah, you go. Right. Race just started. <laughs> like you've got to be kidding me. What does this guy want now? Like one of the biggest race days. This guy. <laughs> this guy says, oh, "Brad speaking." Oh, hey, Brad, how you going? I said, "Yeah, good." He said, "Um." Meanwhile, the horses oh, are going. Yeah, I'm watching the horses. I'm like, "Yeah, mate, can I help?" Um. I don't know. And I said, what do you mean you don't know? And he said, well, I can't remember. He said, you know that house you've got on the market? And I said, what house? He said, oh, come on, mate, you should know. And I'm like, no, I've got no idea, mate. I said, I've got a few houses on the market. Is it land? How? <laughs> definitely, it's a, definitely a house? Or oh, maybe not. No, no it's, it's a block of land you've got. And I said, oh, whereabouts? Stay in the piss, eh? No, and I said, mate, it's just quite... What a fuck with. <laughs> Dead set. I'd had... Oh, the race is on, and then everyone's looking at me, and I'm just like, I walk outside. I said, mate, seriously... What property? He said, well, you know, you've got the sign up. I said, fucking it. I said, mate, <laughs> when you tell me the street, let me know. Couldn't even tell me the street. He goes, oh, I don't know. I'll have to ring you back. Oh, Never yeah. heard from him again. Piss taker, I reckon. It's Meanwhile, your horse is in the lead. You're ready to start cheering. You've got 500 bucks on a winner. And you're like, come on, mate, just tell me the bloody house address. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. Yeah, oh. they, they call it the worst times. You get it all, sort, all sorts. So I think we touched on a a, um, a good tip about mm. um, the, the, like how vendors can price check their house prior to getting yeah, they can, the market yeah. appraisal and make, and make sure that they do their background in case some agents go to try and buy their listing and stuff. So how can they do that for those who don't know how? Yeah, it's a. You've got a few options. You can go onto the house uh, price finder. Um, we have RP data, which gives you an idea of, of where it sits. Yeah. Um, but look, at the end of the day, it's it's up to the owner to do their research to get the right agent. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Um, and and you're now to buy test ring. Mm. See if they answer. Mm. If they don't answer, how are they going to be when they mm. negotiate your property? That's right. Um, even. It, you know, it comes down to commission as well. You know, I know you you're itching to talk about commission, um, which is is a is a it's kind of the secret conversation that is, no one yeah, wants no, to talk it's about. Hush, <laughs> it's a hush, hush conversation. <laughs> Shh, but yeah, all right, let's talk about commission. Off you go. <laughs> yeah, but seriously, like yeah, commission is a bit of a, a funny topic, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. It's um, look, I'm I'm usually three point three percent. Um. Uh, and they range now. The ev- everyone can charge whatever they want. Mm. Um, but if if an owner uh, says to me, "Oh, look, Brad, we're um, look, we like you, but your commission's too high. 
um, you know, I turn around and say, well, hang on, if I'm going to negotiate my commission, how am I going to negotiate one of your biggest assets? That's right. That's a very um, good point. So if I'm going to give away my money now, yep. how am I going to give away your money? So if the I'll vendor, just, if the vendor, throw it in the door like this. Just like, <laughs> seriously, you don't say that to an agent. No. Yeah. So if the vendor's first thing they've done is out negotiate their agent, they're not going to be in for a very good time at the other end, are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't not think that they've they, they've picked quite the right agent there if they're so flimsy on there. Mm. <laughs> yep. So I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the agent does need to earn you know a living, mm. and you know, it's it you know when they hire an agent, you know, it's not just. They think about that end number. They You're don't hiring think about, an experience. Yeah, it's, then, it's not. It's not right. about the. Pro, it's the experience. But one percent, you know, at the end of the scheme of things, you know, depending on your average sort of five hundred thousand dollar house, might be maybe three or four grand. I mean, yes, that's a lot of money, but is that three or four thousand dollars in savings worth that agent being demotivated to not do the right thing? Yes, yeah, you know what it, I mean. Like you could potentially get them five or ten grand, grand more. more yep. you know, for that extra so investment. My job is to negotiate and to and to get the right price. Yeah. And if I can't negotiate, no mm-hmm. agent should deserve to get paid if they can't negotiate. Oh, of course, yeah. No, and you can't sell do a their secret job. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you know? we, we're in the media industry, as, as everyone knows, you know, we take mm. a lot of, you know, um, uh, real estate media as well as a part of our business. Yeah. And um, that's a very, very big part, you know, of marketing a home now. You know, buyers are very visual people. They need to see, you know, the video. I mean, you do a bit of video. You've got, like, do a lot of content as well down your way. And, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there, agents out there that, you know, just, do the basics, you know, and they yeah. wonder why they're not getting the inquiry because the buyers are like, oh, no, that's not telling me enough information. I'm going to waste my time on it. Exactly, I'm going to yeah. go to this one or Swipe. this one. Swipe. So, yeah, so if you can't sell marketing and you get out negotiated by the vendor, that's two strikes. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't answer your phone, that's the third strike. And then you go drive Ubers. And you go drive Ubers on the weekend. <laughs> Uber eats something. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, commission obviously is is a big thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've always believed that they need to look at that as an investment, you know, in the sale of their home, not not trying to save some money. Yep. You, know? Um, you know, I think um, at the moment, you know, when you're selling a home, it's um, that people are, are saving in all the wrong places. You know, um, they would rather put some fresh bark in their lawn and then not spend any money on some decent media yep. to make it look good, you know? Like so even styling a house. Like absolutely. when I first started, I was like, oh, it doesn't really do much. But once you've been in the game for a fair bit, mm. it does because people see those photos online and they say, oh, wow, look at that house. Geez, that furniture's nice. And guess what? Majority yep. of the time, the wife wins. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Well, we did some research on that, okay, and um, now you mention it. So um, we compared internally here, right, so a bunch of homes, uh, unfurnished, yeah, vacant homes on the market, um, and then we compared homes which were either styled or furnished, yeah. The ones which, and then we're talking about a very, very similar group of homes, the ones that were unfurnished and not styled sat on the market three times longer yep, yep. than the ones that were furnished. Hmm. So that's that's kind of proof that buyers are a very visual and emotionally driven person, and yeah, they like it, staged homes. Absolutely, oh, exactly. Well, Everyone can, does. I love a staged home. And you can't tell how big a room is as well when it's not staged, you know. And sometimes photography in the wrong hands can make rooms look ten times bigger than what they should be, which is never a good thing because you get buyers complain, "Oh, this room's nowhere near what it's like online." This house so, is completely different. Completely <laughs> different. Must be a good photographer. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, having a home marketed right with the right agent behind them, get them to do the research is probably, you know, a massive thing now for, for vendors that are looking at, at um, making that move to sell. So do you have any other tips, Brad, you know, that um, might help people, you know, um, reach a decision, you know, to signing up an agent at that point? Look, it's it's a it's hard because at the end of the day, if as soon as you walk into a, into a listing presentation, straight away those vendors will know if mm. they're going to get on with you or not. Yeah. And and the best advice I can give to other agents would be if you ever do a market appraisal, always have the husband and the wife if they're together because there's been a lot of times that I've learned in my time I would go there and there'd be just the wife or mm-hmm you know, or just the husband, and then they would talk and they would say, oh, yeah, but old mate that came the other week, he's, they saw both. Mm. So they saw what what he can present as yeah. to compared to if you go by yourself with and you only see one, it just, it just doesn't, yeah, they 
bit fishy. I guess it's hard. Something to fishy going on there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's kind of hard to like re- re- relay that, like for yep. them to try and tell exactly. their partner or their fiance, or whatever, um, what this agent was like. Because it's like, well, you know, I wasn't there, so how would I know? But I was there for all mate over here. So yeah, it's yeah, a big exactly. trust thing, though, isn't it? Like yeah, people, people. communication and trust. It's, it's yeah. the biggest factor. It. You know, a lot of my work's referral, so it, it's it it's a bit easier for me. Yeah. As I said earlier, I touched on like when someone rings me and says, "Oh, can you do a market appraisal?" It's oh, here we go. We're only I'm only getting used. Yeah. So mm. price checking, price checking. Mm. <laughs> That's all right. You can price check. Yeah. But you don't seem to be a scripts and dialogues type person. No. You seem to be I'll just, quite <laughs> I'll just go off the foot. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of whatever scripts and dialogues out there yeah. that um, doesn't yeah. they don't work for everyone. So yeah. I think I'm not smart enough to remember <laughs> any of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> just be yourself. Be natural. Just yeah. tell people what what they need to hear as opposed to what they should hear. I think it's really important. Hey, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Reddit, for this podcast. That has been awesome to get to know you and more about your business and how that you you, you like. To work and operate, um, and I'm sure that pe- that uh, that pe- people have got uh, 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 have gotten some great tips and and things to to, 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 to use other than you know uh, with with agents or with you know buyers or vendors themselves. Yeah, if it was plenty of great insight there, mate. Yeah, awesome no, thanks, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, no problem, so um, yeah, if anyone uh, wants to have a chat with uh, Brad over here, then yeah, reach out and, and get in contact with him and I'm sure he'll have this on his socials, so hit that messenger button. Get him get him on his social, everyone. Get him Get him, get him hyped up. Yeah. Get him hyped <laughs> get up there, on get social. Get in there, everyone. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much, mate. No, thank you. Awesome. No thanks problem. for having us. No dramas.